Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. We welcome you back to Talk of the Town for this Friday, October the 1st. I'm Gary Stevens. Glad you are with us. First Friday of the month at this time, we spotlight the Highland Department of Public Safety, alternating months between the police department and fire services. October means it's the fire services time. And that means on the other end of our Zoom connection, it is the fire marshal for the city of Highland, Brent Groendike. Brent, good morning and welcome. Brent, good morning and welcome back to WHTC. Morning, Gary. How are you doing today? We are well. Glad you are doing well. And if our listeners have any fire safety and fire related questions, Brent will be happy to answer it at 616 395 1450, 616 395 1450. Before we go too much further along, let's talk about tonight, which is a oh, wow. fun night for the Highland Department of Public Safety's Fire Services Unit. It's time to promenade down 8th Street. That's right. One of the best. And I don't know if you've had a look outside the window here recently, but it is glorious out there. I, there's blue sky, not a cloud to be seen. It's supposed to be about, I don't know, 75 for parade time. So I, I don't think you could draw one up better than this. It looks amazing. Tell us a little bit about the parade itself, uh, what it is about and what, how people can see it and, and, and the like. Yeah, come on down to 8th Street, the traditional parade route. We're going to go uh, take the trucks down uh, 8th Street, starting at Columbia and running all the way down to Maple on the west side of the Civic Center there. Uh, it is just going to be the parade this year, so there won't be any of the traditional trappings of the fire prevention program that we do at the Civic Center. So it is only the parade. Uh, but it's sure to be a good one. I mean, we didn't have one last year, which was a, a major bummer. Uh, and this year, with the weather being what it is, uh, it, it looks phenomenal for tonight. So again, right down 8th Street, park your car, walk up, have your kids wear fire gear if they've got it. We let, we, it's always fun to see that. Um, but it looks like an amazing night. And if you got the time for it, it, it should be some, a, a good sight to see. Uh, by the way, if you bring the youngsters down, make sure they stand a little bit away from the uh, uh, the paths of the trucks because uh, it was noted uh, during the uh, 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 Labor Day truck parade that the youngsters were getting a little close to the uh, where the trucks were moving along, and there was some concerns. Oh, we don't want to have any accidents, so please oh. keep the kids back uh, and uh, don't, don't expect the kids aren't going to get any goodies. No, no, nobody's going to throw candy at them, so. Yeah. You're not going to have that, unfortunately, but that's okay. You know, we want to keep you know, keep them safe, as they say. And yeah. it's not just Holland trucks involved with this, is it? Oh, man. I think it's everybody from Allendale to Zealand that's going to be out there. I mean, it's going to have departments from townships and cities. And we put the word out to quite a few uh, organiz or different fire departments across the area. And Seems like every year we seem to get a little bit of a different turnout, but it's always good. I mean, you see a lot of really well-maintained, beautiful machines. You get to see a lot of the firefighters that serve your community. Uh, it, it really is a cool event, and it's it's something that's great to be a part of that all the different fire departments get to do, and um, it really is enjoyable. Now, there's a, there may be a couple of surprises this year. Uh, there, may be, there may be a flyover. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that that... As of yesterday, um, there may be, there may not be some aircraft that were involved in that, but there may be a flyover with, uh, I believe it's a team of T-34 aircraft. And uh, they've been, they do traditionally some of the other flyovers that you see around here with the parades, but we may have them tonight. Um, and we also may have uh, Holland's previous Tower 5, so we have our new ladder truck now, 1142. That'll be in the parade. Uh, should be the bell of the ball. That thing's been waxed and ready to go. So it looks good. Um, and then uh, the other Tower 5, which I believe is now owned by former or retired Holland Fire Lieutenant. Uh, and he's bringing that out of his own personal collection and may have that there tonight. So that should be a good thing to see too. 
Uh, if you've got a question for Holland Fire Marshal Brent, Gro- Brent Grondike, he'll be happy to take it at 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. Uh, a serious question about tonight. Uh, while all the trucks are promenading down 8th Street, uh, I would assume there are provisions in case there is the, the need is there in our community especially, but other communities participating that uh, if the fire trucks need are needed somewhere else and they're struck in the parade, uh, the, the fire situation will be taken care of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's mutual aid agreements and planning that goes into this and trucks that are staffed and stations that are staffed. And uh, we, we make sure to, to take care to, uh, although it's you know a nice thing to have along the 8th Street corridor to have the fire truck parade and everybody loves to see it. Uh, the communities do still need fire protection, but uh, you can rest assured that if uh, the phrase structure fire goes out from the dispatcher from to any of these to any of these departments, they're going to go. So it's it's what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, and we in this with the Holland Fire Department, we make sure to have our apparatus uh, staggered appropriately through the parade in the event that there is something significant that you know, hey, we're going to get moving and get over there so we can get it taken care of real quick. What time the parade starts? Parade's going to start at seven and line up for the fire departments is at six 30. So line up for the fire departments is on sixth street. And then it's going to make the corner there head south on Columbia and then uh, back westbound there on eighth. Lots of lights. Um, it's always a good time. Mm-hmm. I, it, I mean, it was, again, it was a bummer to not see it last year. So I had, it's fun to do. It's fun to see. It's, it's a unique piece of Americana that we all get to enjoy, and it's great stuff. Let, let's get to the phone. 616-395-1450. Good morning. You're on the line with Fire Marshal Brett Grondike. I got, a couple, I got a couple questions for him. Now, uh, I know the city gives you a, a smoke detector, the fire department, if you need it. And I've had a couple of them put in. Now, what about carbon monoxide? Uh, 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 the carbon monoxide detectors, yeah. Now, do the, does, the, does the city do, or do the fire department do that too? Yeah, we can install them. Um, if if there's something that uh, that you need installed, feel and you're in town there, feel feel free to give us a call. Well, do, you don't have a program like you do with the smoke detectors. Nobody donates money to it yet, have they? <laughs> So the smoke alarms, we usually use our specified donations fund to purchase right. additional alarms, yeah. And but, that, not, but, but not the CO2, right? For the CO alarms? Yeah, yeah. The CO. We have a handful, but I, I haven't looked in the supply closet recently, but we've, we've got a handful. If there's a need, I mean, call the, call the front at 355-1020 and uh, call the front desk there and we'll see if we can't get you squared away. Now, i got another question. Now, you're talking about going to have some collectible uh, uh, fire trucks. Now, have they contacted any of the uh, people that have uh, the antique fire trucks, the ones from the 30s and 40s? Uh, you know, it seems like they kind of, through various means, it, it's one of those deals where if they've got an antique, we're not going to turn them away. I mean, you know, if they somebody's got a collectible or an antique fire truck and they want to have them in the parade, you know, the, I, the more the merrier, I think. Um, okay. We have, there's usually, it seems like about, I don't know, 40 some trucks that are in there. So. All righty. I'll call that number up and ask. Three, five, okay. five, 10, uh, 10, 20, right? My, uh, Brett. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. the front office there. Karen's right. the executive assistant. She'll get you squared away. So. I appreciate the call. 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. Uh, I'm not certain if our friends from the Vintage Auto Club of Holland may be listening if uh, some of their members might have one of those vintage uh, fire trucks. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if they are participating. You know, they're welcome. I mean, it's not as if, uh, you know, you're charging a fee. Yeah. That wouldn't, well, no, 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 no. This is just awareness. This is not a fundraiser. Right. Uh, it is awareness because, and straighten me out on this, Brett, um, fire safety awareness week is coming up, not month, or is it both? It's both. Oh, it, okay. It's a, it's a week within a month. It, there's no, with, with us, every every month and week is fire safety. And so you're talking to people that it's just normal for it to be fire safety. But yes, the national 
in recognition of the fires that swept the Midwest in 1871, um, Chicago being the biggest one. Uh, it's, it's fire safety week, and then it's within the month. So you get two for the price of one, I guess. Yeah, I just was kind of wondering, I, I, because I because we had a guest on um, WHTC Morning News last hour, uh, Carter Pavey from the Gun Lake Casino. Uh, they're doing uh, events surrounding uh, National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I got a yes. little confused about fire safety and whether or not it's a week or a month. But I know it's the same time. You know, basically it ties in with, again, 1871. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, oh, the uh, the O'Leary's uh, uh, fire in Chicago, but we had our share too. And we did. And, you know, and, and, and yeah. the walks that the Holland Museum have about uh, uh, what happened in Holland in 1871. Yeah. So it's the it's the 150th anniversary this year, and as you as you pointed out, uh, the fire legend has it that although the O'Learys have since been exonerated as of 1997, uh, there was no sudden outbreak of cows kicking lanterns and barns across the Midwest. But there they did have several major fires. The city of Chicago being the biggest one. Holland, city of Holland also burned uh, Port Huron, Manistee, and then the significant and most an awful fire was in the Door County Peninsula Peshtigo area of Wisconsin, the Peshtigo fire that originated there. But uh, so to your point, the fire walk is done in conjunction with uh, the Holland Museum, and that is Saturday, October 9, and they have some terrific information on their website. Uh, they're going to have the fire walks. Uh, I had some notes here there at 1 to 2 p.m. and from 3 to 4 p.m. And uh, this year, we did try to ask, or I'd drop by and ask the museum if, if we could, you know, work with them on this since it's the 150th anniversary and try to get the fire department involved. And uh, so I, I'm going to walk along on the tours and then there's going to be some readings that are done at uh, the museum. So that's going to be pretty cool. I, it's, it's a unique opportunity to both combine the historical aspects of the fire with some fire safety and it's, it should be pretty cool. So I, if folks are interested in that, I would certainly encourage them to do it. I hope it's as nice of a day as it is today. I mean, how lucky could we be in October to get that? But um, that'd be phenomenal. 616-395-1450. If you have a question for Holland Fire Marshal Brett Groendyke, he'll be happy to answer it again. 616-395-1450. If I recall correctly, Brett, uh, going back 150 years, it was an atmospheric situation where we had a lot of fires on that day because it was especially dry, uh, you know, it was sort of like a dry uh, bu uh, bubble over the Midwest. So, and of course, at that time, many of the structures were made of wood. So yeah. you add that. You know, those two things that happen. What about concerns? And you mentioned today being another delightful day and all that. Yeah. We've had a lot of dry weather lately. Uh, uh, how much of a fire hazard do we have right now, even though we're supposed to get some, you know, some rainy stuff um, Saturday into Sunday? I haven't checked the DNR's forecast in a, in a hot second there, but I, I mean, looking outside, every, to me, everything looks pretty green. Um, I, I don't think we're under any... Uh, increased risk of fire but uh yeah that i mean you go back to what you were just talking about there that was a a long-term drought that was punctuated by an, ex, a, an exceptionally strong low pressure system with a lot of wind associated with it and when you read a lot of the accounts that people talk about especially from the chicago area they describe it being as very hot very dry and then windy up to that and the city of chicago the day before that had had a pretty extreme fire and a lot of their firefighters at the time were all worn out from fighting that fire. And uh, it, was a, it was a different time, a different system. And uh, fortunately, you know, you learned hard lessons from events like that. And we've since moved forward and have better fire protection and tremendously increased uh, fire code that uh, we apply to situations like that to make sure those don't happen again. So that's six one. Yeah, six one six three nine five fourteen fifty. Good morning. You're on the line with the fire marshal. Yeah, hi. Uh, I know there was a fire. I think yesterday, the day before, down in the Allegan Woods, that they burned up a lot of uh, uh, timber. Um, and they stated, I saw in the article, it said that four percent of their fires are arson related. Is what they said. Um, is there a stat for the Holland area about that? 
for percentage wise? Um, so this year, well, there, yeah, I guess we do. So this year we've had 26 building fires and one of them was human involved intentionally set again, arson being the crime that people are convicted of. And then upon evaluating what the circumstances and the evidence is related to the fire in one of the 26 building fires that we have had so far this year, one of them was intentionally set by a person. Mm, okay. And that comes out to like 0 0.038. So that's about 4%. So, okay. Yeah. Just wondered. I, I never knew that there's a site like that. And that was interesting. So yeah. thank you again. All right. Good thank question, you very, man. Thank you very much for the call. 616-395-1450. One final thing you know, along the caller's line, Brett, is the fact that uh, when people talk about intentionally set blazes, mm -hmm. uh, the old term was firebug. Oh, we yes. got a firebug and wanting to, you know, there's something a little mental on this. But unfortunately, I think maybe it's this is also maybe more dramatic than anything else. A lot of those intentionally set blazes are for insurance purposes and, you know, trying to collect the insurance money because times are a little tough. Yeah, we haven't seen, um, at least in my tenure in this role, and I guess even like throughout the I've, so I've been a firefighter for 19 years now. And I, I, and this is again, my experience and it's not wide ranging or extremely broad, but I can only think of a, maybe one or two instances where it was pretty evident that somebody had set a fire to collect on something like that. In my experience, it was more people that set a fire to destroy evidence, or it was just some other unusual means. Um, so as I have certainly seen some intentionally set fires, but it, I, I, it seems rare that it was any of the insurance related stuff. I none spring to mind. Okay. I, I, it, again, that might be a dramatic license that we see in the TVs and the movies. Ah, they set the place up to, you know, collect the, yeah. collect the insurance money, you know, and here yeah. comes the detective and you know, all this uh, 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 magnifying glass work and all that. And then they realize, yeah, yeah we, we have a, we, we have somebody uh, playing with matches the wrong, you know, the wrong way. Makes but, makes for easy to follow plot line. But yeah, yeah. And by the way, uh, now that you know, fewer few people smoking, uh, they're vaping a little bit. But uh, yeah. let's put it this way: they still sell matches, folks. Even they though do, they might yeah. not sell match books, they still sell matches. So, but it, to your point, real quick, they the leading the, there's two main causes of fire here in the city, and it's it's people improperly disposing of cigarettes, and it's electrical problems. And that, that's what it is. Between those two causes alone, we've had 16 fires in the city since July 1. So it's smoking and it's electrical issues. And the rest of it is a process. And then we had the one intentionally set fire. But um, yeah, it's smoking is still, I mean, every single year we get smoking. The, the biggest fire we've had in the past three years was a million dollar, roughly a million dollar loss that came off a 44 cent cigarette. So that's, you know, if there's ever an incentive to quit, that'd be it. So... <laughs> Brett, the uh, reason why I had asked a little bit earlier about the fire danger in our area right now is that even though it's not allowed in the city of Holland, there are some people that live in municipalities that do allow burning of leaves. And that comes with its own set of issues to make sure that only the leaves burn and not the entire, not the entire neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> okay. We, we, they, that's, it's, it's allowed in those jurisdictions, but yeah, in, in the city of Holland, you can, you can have a fire in, uh, in your, in a confined, uh, enclosed can or uh, manufactured style portable fireplace or an in-ground fireplace, no greater than 36 inches. Uh, and it has to be at a minimum 15 feet away from combustibles. Now that's the city. Uh, the various other jurisdictions, they may or may not have fire code that is enforced that way. So, but, yeah. I just wanted um, to bring it up because people, you know, they, they, you know, they're going to want to, you know, take care of the leaves and, you know, they yeah. don't have, you know, they don't have break the leaves to the curve like you have here yeah. in Holland or in Zealand. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that uh, the stay safe in, in that regard. Uh, but also it is the time for campfires, 
uh, of people camping out to see the see the see the leaves and see the uh. changing of the colors and uh, you know uh, you, just watch yourself when you you set up those those fire you know the fi- even in the fire pits yeah oh I'm in a fire true. pit well you, you build so, a too high a fire no fire pit's going to contain that. No, now you had mentioned earlier that fire prevention month, fire prevention week. Now the theme is sounds of safety, and that's a reminder to make sure that you've got a smoke alarm on every in every sleeping area, one on every level of your home, and then one in the mechanical spaces. Uh, but I think it's also a nice takeoff uh, when you think about sounds of safety, and it's there are some songs that have fire in them that are referenced, and I have a, a personal favorite here. I wrote down that uh, mine was. Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, the mid-1980s classic, the staccato baby boomer anthem about all the historical events that happened. You got a favorite fire song there, Gary? Well, not necessarily a, a, a favorite fire song. I mean, we do have some that uh, have that term, but it doesn't relate to, uh, uh, let's just say, something combustible. It's something a little bit different. Of course, I'm thinking about the, the Wicked Witch got burned, you know, Hey, Scarecrow, how about a little fire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then Dorothy douses her with water and I'm melting. What a world, what a world. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, good movie. Movie. Yeah. it's a classic. It's a classic and Margaret Hamilton uh, couldn't live that down even when she was selling her Folgers. But again, yeah. the Holland Fire Parade is tonight, seven o'clock. You can uh, go to, you know, basically window on the waterfront. Uh, the, the trucks will start lining up around there at 6.30. And then uh, the promenade down uh, 8th Street to the Civic Center place. Unfortunately, uh, nobody's going to stick around today because of COVID-19 health regulations. But indeed, uh, uh, it's still a fun day. And we hope Brent Grondike and all that's involved with the Holland Fire Safety Parade all goes well. Appreciate the time yeah. you spent with us this morning, Brett. And Thank you. It's been great. We'll look, look forward to talking with you again soon. Go ahead. Take care. Have a good one. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brett Grondike on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.